This is Buffalo State Data Talk, the podcast where we introduce you to how data is used and explore careers that involve data. Tune into this episode of Buffalo State Data Talk, where Brian Barry will be interviewing Achinta Pillay, a data scientist who worked for Panasonic at the Tesla Gigafactory in Buffalo. Achinta will talk about what he does and what it's like working in manufacturing as a data scientist. Make sure to keep listening to find out what skills he thinks are critical and his advice for starting your career in data science. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to episode one. I'm your host, Brian Berry, and today we'll be talking to Achinta Play about his experiences in data science. The first question is, what, what does your typical schedule look like? And uh, does it vary from day to day, or is it fairly consistent? So my typical schedule when I was in New York, it was very... Um, but it was not very mundane. It didn't look the same every day. Uh, depending on projects, uh, you have to talk with many teams. That's something that's very important because um, you you might have a particular focus working in a company. For me, it was uh, my focus was on manufacturing processes. So anything related to speeding up manufacturing or meeting uh, manufacturing 4.0 standards or trying to achieve those standards, those were my major goals. But sometimes requests do come in from different teams, such as the... Uh, human resources team, they have analytics to do uh, that you might have to get involved in. So those are the kind of things that um, that, that causes a little bit of variation in day-to-day -day tasks. Uh, as far as just a regular day, how it usually looks like is um, you, you usually end up getting a project, obviously, but once you get the project, yeah, the first step is uh, in the day is to really ask yourself, do, you, do I have all the data that I need? Uh, what are the sources that uh, my information is coming from? You need to check all your sources on a regular basis just to make sure data collection is good, um, all your pipelines are set up, there's no issues with uh, the data flowing in. And uh, also checking, sometimes if you have a data engineer or DBA, uh, database administrator on, on site, uh, you don't have to look worry about the systems uh, and if it's running and all that stuff because he would tell you, but if you don't, which happens sometimes, you might also have to check up on your... Um, space utilities like do you have enough space in the sql server to add another application to collect data stuff like that but once you've figured out the data collection process and everything is correct um usually you're good for your daily checkups now you're to go ahead and i usually end up making a lot of graphs uh, just to analyze certain uh, different components that the company's looking for so if the company's looking for um why is the reason uh, that certain product values are coming out so bad uh you have to go ahead and start just on a daily basis, just looking at how, what the process information is in the database, which is affecting these values and why, why is it actually causing these values to go bad? Uh, that's an analytical part of the day. Um, now, after that, you go into more of an automation side. Once you kind of figure out the analytics, you have to start, now this is where the coding comes in, where you are to start making scripts in Python or R and start scheduling it regularly to do the same task so that different teams get graphs on a regular basis rather than just one analytical task per day. That's not very realistic because you have all the drop tasks as well. Um, now for these regular, regular tasks, you can either write scripts or you can also use programs like Tableau or uh, uh, Power BI. These are kind of visualization softwares which regularly give them updates, which is connected to the database. So that's how my day-to-day -day schedule looks like. What did you plan to be when you grew up? Uh, I actually originally planned to be uh, a software engineer. Um, so that's what my initial goal was. That was what I planned to be, yeah. Do you see ties to what you wanted to be along the way and where you've ended up? Uh, yeah, of course. So um, when, like I said, a software engineer is what I wanted to be initially. So I went to school to do uh, computer science as an undergrad. And uh, that kind of, uh, I took a couple of math courses uh, uh, while I was doing my computer science program. And I kind of got interested in statistics and computer science at the same time. So uh, I found out about something called data science, which involved uh, both to an extent. Uh, so I ended up getting into data science in that sense. So as I went along the journey of software engineering, I kind of uh, found that math and data science to be a little bit more interesting. That's how I kind of weirded my way towards uh, data science. 
Yeah, they're both kind of intertwined into uh, into yeah. data science, right? What are the skills that help you you move into this career? Um, like oh. hard skills or any soft skills? Of course. Uh, as far as hard skills go, um, just uh, for real uh, being realistic, you do need a level of coding ability to be able to get into the field because. In reality, there is a lot of uh, systems and a lot of databases, a lot of programs and scripts that you will have to deal with that you have to know how to program to an extent. Uh, specifically, SQL, uh, whether that be Microsoft SQL or PLS SQL, which is related to Oracle, uh, and a couple of uh, a couple of programming languages like Python would be very very helpful as you're to make scripts multiple times. R is also something that's very useful because uh, it. It basically has coding packages and math packages combined in it. So that's a very good statistical and analytical coding tool. Um, so as far as hard skills, those are something, those are some things that you would have to know. Um, one thing that I've learned after getting into the industry is that um, soft skills like communication, being able to write documentation uh, very well, those things are extremely important because most of your time would go into communicating with uh, multiple teams uh, which is difficult for a person who hasn't done it before, believe it or not. Like you'd think you would be able to do it, but when you actually get put in the spot, asking the right kind of questions relating to where they're coming from is actually a very difficult task. Uh, also being able to document whatever you're writing is something that I found difficult initially because it might seem good to you because you're doing it, but when someone completely new comes in and reads what you're trying to do, especially how you're trying to impact the business, you need to be able to give good documentation. So those are the kind of skills. Yeah, we definitely are looking at those kind of skills, right? Sure. Um, so, you know, you, you were kind of talking about, um, you know, working with, with teams. So do you, do you work alone or do you work with a team and how often? Uh, we, we were split into a smaller team. So we had one data scientist um, which dealt with the manufacturing process. So he looked at the data, tried to analyze it. We had software engineers and integration engineers who kind of uh, connected the endpoints from basically from the machine in the manufacturing process. How do I get the information? So there has to be a pipeline and that in that scenario. So he dealt with that, basically trying to get me the data. And then there's also a data engineer or a database administrator who has to be there to kind of deal with uh, the servers, the databases. So that was kind of how our team is structured. So um, when, when you have meetings, what are the types of things that you talk about? Ah, uh, um, so meetings obviously are regular. You can have meetings with your internal team. Uh, I'll start with that. They just basically talking about the application that's already running, what are the kind of resources it's going to take. And it's important for me to mention this because you, as a data scientist, whoever's trying to be a data scientist, they should know about, uh, even though they don't know everything about databases and all those things, um, they, and I don't know if in college I specifically took, I don't remember myself taking any course related to specifically related to databases, how they function, uh, how queries should work, how, speed, speeding up queries some students might take, but it's not very common. So you should spend the time outside of class to learn about uh, databases in general, because you would be talking with other data engineers or database administrators who will ask you these questions about how much space do you think it's going to take? Uh, how much, how much, how many times is your script going to run? Because we only have certain available space that we can provide to you. So these are the kind of things that is important to know. If you don't, uh, it, you can still learn on the job for sure. But I think it's better knowing go, knowing before you go, and it'll give you a good advantage. Um, as far as internal meetings go, that's how it usually goes. Also, you'd have to know about programming concepts just so that you can give a gen generic idea to any software developer if you have to make any program to collect the data. People forget that the data actually has to be somewhere. Uh, without that data, your job is kind of redundant. So you need to be able to talk with a software developer as well to actually, for him, helping him make the application to collect information. Um, other meetings that go through, uh, now these are the important meetings where you have to talk with the actual teams. Um, whether it be the engineering team or uh, whether it be the HR team or whether it be the quality department team, customer service team, it doesn't matter. You, you kind of, you might have to talk with many teams depending on the situation. Uh, but the questions, how those meetings usually go is me asking a lot of questions 
and them really trying to answer them. I ask, uh, I, in the beginning, I ask a lot of questions and they might not think about, but uh, it's important for me to know is number one question to ask is how many sources of data do you actually have? Mm -hmm. um, do you just have Excel sheets that you've been filling by hand? Uh, can I get any other sources of information from, even if it's from Twitter, if you can get some information from Twitter, go ahead and get that information using APIs. Uh, do you have uh, other database information stored somewhere else from the past that you can give me? Uh, and it's better to get just all the data. It doesn't matter uh, what kind of data it is. It doesn't matter what the quality is. It's better that you have all of it and then you can work on fixing it, figuring out any flaws, working with bad data, et cetera. Uh, because a lot of the times you will notice when you go to work, these questions are asked because most of the time you'll notice that a lot of people don't actually have the data. Um, if they do, it's great. If they don't, that's a problem. So that's why you just ask them how many sources of information they have. Um, now, after that, I usually ask them what their goal is with all of this. Uh, what are you really looking for? Because I can make a billion fancy graphs, which will not help them at all. Right. <laughs> um, you just need to make them a graph so that they can, on a day-to-day -day basis, look at it and say, what is the decision I can make? Uh, th this part is important because your value as a data scientist or a data analyst is uh, added on based on the business impact that you give the company. So we, unlike software developers, we don't have a product that we're shooting out or we're not working on slight features, but we are actually trying to make a business impact. So these questions are important to know because it's your job to help them make that impact, you know? So we need to ask a lot of questions. If, uh... A lot of right questions, yeah. And ask them what they're really looking for so that you can try to, you can really try to help them. Yeah. Awesome. What, what is a challenge that you've overcome in your, your education or, or career? Domain knowledge is kind of vastly underestimated or grossly underestimated and uh, while you're studying because they speak about this domain knowledge stuff, but you don't really understand how important that is. Uh, if, if you're working in a company like, I, like me, we're working on cars and batteries and all these chemical technologies and mechanical technologies that you have no, I, I did my computer science engineering and then I did my uh, master's in engineering data science. So I don't know much about chemistry or like mechanical engineering and stuff like that, right? But there are a whole slew of people who have been working here for years and years and who have been building up this understanding of the domain and the, how, the, how the product functions and every single little aspect of it. And you have to go in there and try to really understand these aspects. And that is a big challenge when you go to work because depending on what industry you work for, you really have to be able to understand what your company is trying to do in the industry, uh, where their business values are in the value chain. Like where does their business value stand? Because if their business values come in research and development, that's where your, uh, your kind of, uh, your expertise is going to really go into try to help research and development, make new designs, make new ideas and stuff like that. But if your value is, if your company's value is going more into manufacturing, uh, you would have to like really think about how you can use manufacturing data to maybe speed up the process, reduce the costs, stuff like that. So you see the difference between where research and development versus manufacturing development. Like these, these are kind of domains that you really have to find out and see where your company is focusing on and really try to understand what they're trying to do. That is a big challenge. A lot of people kind of don't think about it before they join. They're very excited to get the job. Uh, but once they get the job, you, you really ought to dig into that. So that's a challenge that I faced when I worked uh, that kind of overcame it, but it took me a while. It took it took me about a few months. Yeah, I think that makes sense. You know, really understand the company that you're working for. and Yeah, exactly. And you don't know the, and also if you're working with a lot of engineers and stuff, they know their thing. They know their stuff inside out. Like they know what the product does. They've basically helped build it. So uh, if you're going to come in there and say, I'm a data scientist and say that I'm going to give you some analytical work so that you can make changes to your business process or your, uh, or your engineering process, that's going to be a, it's a bold statement to make, you know, because these guys have, these guys are educated. They're definitely very well, uh, well equipped, like no, knowledge wise, they're very well equipped with the product. So if you're going to go there and tell them that you need to definitely know what you're talking about, you know, otherwise they won't take you seriously. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So um, the next section that we're going to do is um, it, I titled it interesting problems. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to ask you three questions from here. 
So um, I guess without giving away too much, um, what do you think are the interesting problems of your field? Interesting problems in my field. So it's just in my field in particular. Uh, manufacturing is something that a lot of people don't look into, but um, bigger companies like Ford, GM, Tesla, uh, Panasonic, GE, especially these kind of companies focus a lot on. They do have they own a plethora of business businesses in different industries, right? Um, manufacturing is something that they do in house. So um, as far as we go, one big problem that one big movement that everyone's trying to make is they're trying to move from uh, the current manufacturing industry to 4.0 manufacturing 4.0, where there is less of human interaction because errors usually end up in that area. I'm not saying all human contact is gone or anything, but very less. So uh, I was going to ask you, um, could you go in a little bit into manufacturing 4.0? Because I had heard you mention it earlier. Yes. Uh, so manufacturing 4.0 is the idea where uh, people want to kind of move into more of a bit like manufacturing process where there is more automation, less human interaction, uh, basically, that's the gist of it, right? There's obviously a lot more to it, but just to give a general idea, right now there's a lot of um, a lot of situations where errors can come up because a lot of values might not be calculated correctly. People are doing a lot of things by hand. They're trying to move away from that concept, and they're trying to move into a different kind of industry standard. Um, as far as data scientists go, we have a big part to play in that because most of all of these automation works will require a lot of machine learning and analytical tools to do it how much of this particular, uh, so, so for an example, how much temperature should we put this machine at at this particular time based on your previous data, right? Based on what you know, if you have a hundred products in that machine, what should the temperature be? This is just an example. It's not, uh, it's not like, it's not something that you would do, but uh, yeah, that those are the kind of things that you would have to do. And you would know from the past that all oh, 100 products are there. If you keep the temperature at, at a certain degree, the products are going to go bad. So rather than someone being there and making a mistake, your program should automatically kind of understand that, you know, and that's where that's something that everyone's trying to move towards. Uh, the problem a lot of the times is that, that people would face when they go into this is um, there is just sometimes it just might not be in a data collection in, in your company. Uh, it's a new concept. It's only been around for two years, you know, like the whole data science or data collection process. Like it's, it's really coming up now. So it might take a little bit of time for people to actually get all the information they need, good data, bad data, so that your algorithm can really learn from it. Right. Uh, sometimes people might not have good data at all by good. I mean, they might just have, they might not even have data um, by like uh, then you have data, there might be a lot of missing values and stuff like that, so bad data again. Uh, you might just not have the years of data that you need to basically get seasonality, trends, so time series analysis is kind of, uh, is kind of shot there if you don't have the years of data that you need. Um, yeah, so those are the kind of issues that you face a lot in manufacturing at least. So if you do get um, bad data, what do you usually do with it? Do you, do you just toss out the data set or do you have to kind of massage it a little or? Yeah, I try to preserve as much as I can. Um, like I said, we're still so young that data collection isn't as uh, plentiful as uh, you, you'd want it to be. So you can't just chuck out like a thousand data points or even 10 data points. It's not very easy to just throw it away because um, it, it's just not a smart idea. You'll just end up losing more data and which will affect the algorithm quite a bit because Usually what happens is if you have a hundred, hundred data points and you're trying to look for bad quality products and a hundred data points, um, most likely than not, majority of them will be good products. So you will only have a small majority that's actually bad quality products, but what, what caused those bad quality products are very important. But since you only have a few of these data points, it's very difficult for your algorithm to understand, okay, these kind of situations lead to a bad product, right? So you need to have years of data so that you have these bad product uh, data accumulated so you can teach your algorithm to understand this. Um, I don't just chuck away data points. I try to massage it. I try to preserve it as much as I can, whether it be, can I fill in the information practically from somewhere else? Uh, can I, instead of just removing it, can I find average it out with the other, um, other data points in that column? 
can it be zero? Will that be okay? Will that affect my process by any means? Would that show up normal results? You know, so those are the kind of things that you have to think about. Cool. Yeah. So um, what sort of collaborations are you most interested in seeing? And what do you see as the benefits of those collaborations? So I, what I would like to see, like if you look at the financial sector, and my, bot, my managers talk about this all the time. He, uh, his goal or vision, a lot of managers have this actually, they, they have a vision of making data science kind of like a day-to-day -day use. Like you have to be able to make a consumer use data science products every day rather than just making them request it and stuff like that. It, the, the product has to be out there where they're using it consistently and they're making significant business decisions based on your algorithms. That is where real values lie. So in financial sectors, you have tech sector, like if you have a bank, you'll have a technology division of the bank. Uh, if they're able to make higher ups or if they're able to make management, uh, make more important decisions based on these, uh, based on these analytical tools that you have made, that will be the most interesting thing to see because you really see whether the field is really helpful for a business or not, right? Uh, so as far as collaborations go, I would like, I personally would like to see more the, the technology division of a company collaborate more with the management division of the company and make it a more day-to-day -day kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is there anything in particular that you would like to talk about or um, an issue that you'd like to raise that you haven't touched on yet? I would like to make it very uh, more aware that in the field of data science, it's not just statistics and machine learning and uh, analytics that you do. It, it also involves a lot of uh, a lot of other disciplines like uh, database administration or uh, data engineering. You have to be able to understand those concepts uh, because you need to be able to know what other people are doing because it's closely related to your work. So much so that you really have to be able to uh, guide them also in the right direction to move so that you can finish your job. Um, data science is not as uh, it's not as established as software development is, like their work culture. Yeah. And a lot of data scientists are young, younger. Uh, so we have to understand that since it's not as established, even our hierarchical system is not as established in many companies. Because sometimes if you're in a smaller company, you kind of do multiple roles. Like you wear many hats, you kind of do data engineering, data science work as well. Uh, but if you're in a bigger company, it could be split apart. Like you would have specific data engineers, you would have specific data scientists. Uh, but it's, you, it's, I think it's very important for you to know that you should probably know what a lot, like what, what data, science, data engineers or database administrators do. You should know how databases function. So those are the kind of things that I think I just wanted to mention so that everyone knows. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my last question, uh, what advice would you give to others that are interested in going into your field? Uh, whether that be back in high school when making uh, decisions or, um, you know, about an additional education or people who are thinking about a career change. Mm. To advise for people, if they want to, if they want to become a data scientist or a data engineer, I think it's important for them uh, to know that you need some sort of a coding background. Uh, so if you have the opportunity to go to college, try to pick something related to math coding maybe dual majoring or something where you have the or maybe uh mis as well uh, where you get some coding experience because that's that is important how uh, whichever way you look at it um if you have the coding experience already you can also get it from udemy you can get it from online sources which is very valid um and it, but if you have the coding experience already then i would strongly recommend you start looking into mathematical uh like uh courses because stats is important. You do learn about stats. Stats in particular, not mathematics as a whole, but st statistics in particular is very important, probability stats. So if you don't have that experience, then you should probably try to get into that. But if you're at a starting point where you have nothing, if you're in high school where you're, you're going to get your high school diploma, I would first suggest you do the coding part. If you can do both at the same time, like doing a dual degree or minoring or something like that, that's good. But if you can only pick one, start with the coding and then kind of work your way into math uh, by doing online courses on the side. And then that would be a good base to get into so, uh, data science. Well, great. Well, yeah. uh, thanks for doing the interview, Achinta. I, I really had a great time listening to you. And <laughs> Thank you. It's, you know, it's been a really good time. Sure, same. 
Thanks for listening to Buffalo State Data Talk. For more information about starting your career as a data scientist, go to dataanalytics.buffalostate.edu. Don't forget to subscribe so that you get a notification each time we release a new episode. And join us September 1st for the next episode of Buffalo State Data Talk.